Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Saroj Kumar Amar, working as assistant professor in Forensic Science Division, Lovely Professional University, Jalandhar, Punjab. I am going to focus on the module which is Forensic Entomology, Life Cycle, Blowfly, Forensic Application, which is under the paper heading of Forensic Science and Forensic Medicine. After completion of this module, a student will able to understand the science of insect and its forensic significance. Learners will also be able to determine the time since death from the insect. A student will be aware with the life cycle of blowfly. The learners will also understand the time required for the decomposition of dead body and the factor affecting decomposition. Forensic Entomology, a study of insect to the criminal investigation. Insects are known to have been used in the detection of crime for a long time and a number of researchers have written about the history of forensic entomology. The Chinese used the presence of fly and the other insect as a part of their investigation armory and for the crime scene investigation and instances for their use of recorded as early as the mid 10th century which is cited in Greenberg and Koenig in year 2002. Indeed, such was the importance of insect in crime scene investigation that in the year 1235. A training manuals on investigating death, washing away of the wrongs was written by Sung T. Z. U. In this medico legal book, it is recorded that the landing of a number of blowfly on a particular sickle caused a murder to confess the murdering a fellow Chinese farm worker with the sickle. A stages of decomposition of body, the stages of decomposition of a body have been a topic of interest for both artists and the scientists over a long period of time. There are three recognizable processes in corpse decomposition. These are autolysis, putrefaction and a skeleton bone decomposition which is also called diagenesis. In autolysis, a process of natural breakdown, the cells of the body are digested by enzymes including lipase, protease and the carbohydrate which is already present inside the body. The process can be most rapid in organs such as the brain and liver as concluded by Was in the year 2001. A soup of the nutrient is released which forms a food source for bacteria. Putrefaction is the breakdown of tissue by bacteria. As a result, gases such as hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, methane, ammonia, hydrogen and carbon dioxide are released. Alongside this, anaerobic fermentation takes place when the volatile propionic acid and the butyric acids are formed. The body undergoes active decay in which the protein source are broken down into fatty acids and the bacteria as finding of the vase in year 2001. Fatty acid and the such compo compounds such as ascatol, pitricine and cadaverine are the significant member of this decomposition product. When the soft tissue is removed, a skeleton material organic and inorganic remains are further broken down by the environmental condition and are finally reduced to components of the soil. The rate of decomposition is temperature dependent. A formula has been proposed by forensic pathologist to estimate the time of body decomposition to the skeleton in relation to temperature as calculated by again Vaas et al. in year 2001. The formula is that the Y is equal to 1285 
upon x where the y is number of day to mummification or the skeletonization and the x is average temperature of the day before the body was found by was at all in year 2000-1992. If the body is found in on land, the body can be allo allocated to one of the five recognizable post-mortem condition, which can be linked to the eight wave of arthropods colonization proposed by Magnin in year 1894. Although no stages has been a fixed duration, each stage can be associated with the particular assemblage of the insect, these stages of the post-mortem changes, the stage first. The fresh stage, the stage started from the moment of death to the first sign of bloating of the body. The first organism to arrive are the blowfly, which is under the family of Califordi. The second stage, which is the bloated stage, breakdown of body continue because of bacterial activity or the putrefaction and this is perhaps the easiest stage to distinguish. Gases causing the coughs to bloat are generated through the metabolism of the nutrients by anaerobic bacteria. Initially the abdomen swell, but later the whole body become stretched like a air balloons. At this stage, more and more blowfly are attracted to the body, possibly the response to the smell of the breakdown gases concluded by Vaas et al. in year 1992. Studies of the order animating from the dead bodies that were both resting on the surface and had been buried. Rove beetles under the family of Stephylinidae may be attracted at the body at the blood stages. Because of this, ready meals for the egg and maggots, these and the other predator can affect the interpretation of the range of insect and the insect life stages present as they feed on larvae or remove the pupa. Now going to discuss the third stage which is active decay stage. This stage is recognizable by the skin of the corpse breaking up and starting to the slot from the body. The sloshing allow the decomposition gases to escape and so the inflammation of the body gradually subsidize as the petrifaction continue. In the later stage of petrifaction, fermentation occur and the butyric and casic acids are generated. This is followed by a period of advanced petrifaction which include ammoniacal fermentation of the body to which the different coherents of the insects are attracted. These include the sulfides beetle, hister, cadaverinus, hoffman and the mucid fly. Stage 4, post decayed stage. In the later stage of decay, all the remains of the body are skin, cartilage and the bones with some remnants of the flesh including the intestine. Any remaining body tissue can be dry. The biggest indicator of this stage is an increase in the presence of beetles and the reduction in the dominance of the fly in the, under the family diptera on the body. Now going to discuss the last stage which is the stage 5 skeletonization. At this stage the body is only hair and the bones. No obvious group of the insect are associated with this stage. Although the beetles of the family Nitidulaceae can be found, the body has clearly reached its the final stage of decomposition. Any further breakdown is the best described in the term of the decay of individual components of the body such as the bones of the feet and the legs, the skulls and the ribs. The forensic entomologist job include number of techniques about the life cycle of insect species like succession, larval weight, 
larval length and the accumulated degree hours technique. Job of forensic entomologist. The first job of forensic entomologist is that the identification of insect at the various stages of their life cycle such as egg, larva and adult. The second job of forensic entomologist is the collection and preservation of the insect as a evidence. The third one is estimation for the post mortem interval or the PMI determination or you can say the time since that estimation. Based on the dependent factor such as identification of insect or their the stage, whether the condition, location and the condition of the body. The fourth one is the justification before the court explaining the insect related evidence which is found only from the crime scene. The most insect used in the investigation are the two major order. The first is the fly under the family Diptera and the beetles under the Calioptera. After the death, body temperature drop, rigor mortis sets in and the variety of insect and the other in invertebrate attracted toward the dead body or corpse. Fly especially the Califrodaceae, green bottles and the blue bottles fly, larva or the maggots under the Diptera figures mainly in the invasion of the tissue. Usually female of the genus Califordis OV deposit appear within the minutes following the death. Thus, the fly leaves evidence trail of the egg batches white to yellow and the 2 mm in the length in the mouth, nose, ear, wounds and if they expose the anus and the genitalia within the minutes of death. This natural body opening provides the moist, humid cavities which enhances the egg hatching and the larval survival. Now, the importance of species succession. Some species feed only on the fresh coughs while the other species prefer to feed on one of the dead for the two weeks. Experts should find other insect species that prey on the insects feeding on the corpse, which may give clue to missing species. Importance of dependent factor whether data is also an important tool in analyzing the insect evidence from a corpse. Investigator will make a note of the temperature of the air, ground surface, the interface area between the area and the body in the soil, the body as well as the temperature inside the maggots masses. They will also collect the weather data related to the daily temperature, high and low and the precipitation for the periods of time before the body was discovered to the time and the inherited evidences was collected. Other factor that might affect their postmortem interval estimation are the first one is what the body enclosed in a area or wrap in a material that would have prevented fly from the finding the corpse and lying eggs. The second factor that can affect is the where other insect species present that may have affected the development of the collected species. The third factor which can affect that is the weather where whether the drug or the other poison in or on the body that might have affected the larva developments. The next topic which I am going to discuss is blow fly metamorphosis. Blow fly are the fascinating to dead body and often arrive within the minutes of the death of an animal. Blow fly have the complete life cycle with egg, larva, pupa and the adult stages. When the body is submerged in water, in water the same five stages still occur along with an additional stage. This additional stage is the floating decay stage. Whether the body rises on the water surface at this point beside the aquatic insect such as the mis, larva and the invertebrate such as water snails, terrestrial insect species also colonize on the body. This stage is the most obvious stage and tends to be the 
point at which the body is noticed and recovered from the water. The periods of time after the death when this takes place in depends on the temperature of the water. The relationship between the time death and the physical breakdown of the body has been investigated by Garrison. He cited the Kappers dictum as the means of determining the length of the post mortem interval. This rule says that as a tolerable similar average temperature, the degree of putrefaction present in the body lying in an open air for one week or the one month is correspond to that found in a body after lying in the water for two weeks or two months or the body is lying in the earth or buried body in the usual manner for equivalent to eight week or eight month that is the ratio is one is to two is to eight. It means that the lands, water and bodies. The reason for this difference is decomposition in that the speed, speed at which the body loses heat in water is twice as the speed at which the body loses heat in air. Life cycle of fly. Both fly and the beetles have a life cycle which shows the complete metamorphosis. This means that the different life cycle stages look dissimilar. The cycle started when the adult female lays their egg and following the descriptive related to the life cycle of the fly. The first one, the adult fly lay their egg on the carcass especially at the wound area or the area, the opening of the body such as the nose, eyes, ear, anus, etc. The second egg hatches into the larva maggots in 12 to 14 hours. The third one is the larva condition continue to grow in the mold, set their exoskeleton as they pass through the various instar stages. The first instar having the length is 5 mm after 1.8 days, the second instar is of the length of 10 mm having after 2.5 days. The third instar having the length of 14 to 16 mm with the days 4 to 5 days. The fourth star having the length of 17 mm develop into the pupa after burrowing in the surrounding soil. The fifth stage that is the last stage adult fly emerge from the pupa cases after the 6 to 8 days. The egg stage Diptera tends to lay egg in the bacteria and clumps on the eggs are laid in places on the cups that provided the protection, moisture and the food. In general, the number of egg lays is around the 150 to 200. The blow fly egg is usually very shiny and white, ranging in size from around 0.9 mm to over 1.5 mm long 0.3 mm wide to 0.4 mm wide as concluded by Rogness in year 1991. The outer texture coating of the egg is termed the chorion. This sculpting the which may for the example of reticulates or the spotty can be used to identify the different species of fly. If an electron microscope is available investigating the surface of the egg may be a means of making identification to add the least genus and the fly species which has colonized the body Greenberg and sign in year 1995. The end of the egg has a hole in it called the micropyle. This is the route by which the sperm gain entry to fertilize the egg. A furrow called the plastron run the length of the egg along the side. The act is and the means of trapping air should the egg become covered by water droplets or be drawn in water as the so adds continue respiration. The emergence of the 
first instar larva from the egg is called Isiocyon. Although this term has been used for describing any form of the hatching, the larval stage, the larva has the 12 segment and the pointed anterior ends. All that remains of the head capsule found on the other insect larva with a black structure comprising mandible and related sclerites and the ending in the moth's hooks. The posterior end is blunt and has the two brown circular area on the final segment these are the posterior spiracles. In the fly there are the three larval stage or the instar and a particular larval stage out of three is distinguished by referring it to the L1, L2 and L3. The specific life stage of the larva can be identified by the number of slit present in each posterior aspiracles. In the first instar, one slit is present, in the second instar, two slits are present and in the third instar, three slits are present. In blow fly, there is normally a difference in size of the larva in the third larval stage the first instar tends to the less than 2 mm in the length with the second instar is 2 to 9 mm long and the third instar can be 9 to 22 mm long. The length of this instar can vary depends upon the so many factors however the size is relatively unreliable measurements of the age because it depends upon the amount and the quantity of food available. Although a body may be considered to be an abundant source of food, the aspiracles are located on the horizontal faces of this the final posterior segments. The distance between the tubercles play a role in the identification of larval species. For example, in larva, the Lucilia sericata point out that the inner tubercles those at the 12 o'clock are separated from the each other by a distance roughly equal to the distance between the inner and the median tubercles. A sticking out from the third anterior segment of the larva there is a anterior aspiracles which looks like a hand with finger projectings from its the morphology of these aspiracles can also be used as the means of identification. In some species, larva in the third instar are the largest and halfway through this stage they stop feeding and become migratory seeking a place of preparation and the final development stage of the metamorphosis into the adult stage. This is called the larval post feeding stage. Larvae move away from the body towards dark and the somewhat cooler area. In the post feeding stage, the contents of the coughs begin to reduce the, until finally there is no obvious dark line of the coughs materially visible through the white larvae cuticles. Craig suggested that the post feeding larva may move up to 6.4 meter from the carcass. On concrete floor such as in the building, post feeding larva have been known to migrate up to 30 meters from the body. Usually the post feeding larva attempt to bury inside the soils or some other dark location. They may be found as the searching in the first 2 to 3 centimeter depth of the soil at the puparial case changes color over time, becoming an oval object resembling an the uncut cigar color somewhere between the reddish brown and the dark brown or the black. These cases maintain all the features of the third instar, so there is some possibility of the identifying this stage to species using key for the identification of third instar dipteran larvae some attempts have been made to 
relate the stages of coloration developments of the puparium to the post mortem interval, but the date the methods have not shown great accuracy beyond the first 24 hours as the work of Greenberg shown. Emergence of the adult at the ends of the life cycle is achieved by its pushing the cap of puparium using a blood inflated region on the head called pitinium. This is like a airbag which projects from the anterior dorsal region of the heads and the fly emerges. The latter sink back into the facial structure generating the creases just above the antenna. The moth hooks remain inside the broken puparium case and can be used to confirm the identification. If you can find them, the adult pushes out of the puparium cases and the up through the soil responding the light's intensity very slightly. Once above the soil surface, the fly evacuated the waste products on the pupation as the greenish black liquids. This material is called the meconium. The fly dry out and Eventually, its wings expands and grayish color fly become the pigmented as for example, a blue beetles or the green bottle. The speed of the insect development is determined by a temperature, I mean the temperature is the dependent factor. A number of researcher in the number of country have determined the duration of the life stages of locally relevant species of the fly. At a particular temperature, the information from the experimental measure for the post mortem interval because from it is the energy budget for the development that is the accumulation degree, accumulated degree hours can be determined. It is important to use the sum of the duration of each of the individual life stages and the work with both the average and the maximum and minimum duration at the specific experimental temperature used post mortem interval PMI estimation. After identifying the species from the body, the next stage is to link with the information to the temperature at the crime scene. Temperature data covering the period since the person was last seen alive or obtained from the local meteorological station. These data are corrected using a correction factor calculated from the meteorological office data and the half hourly temperature reading, which have been recorded at the crime scene for 3 to 5 days after the body was discovered. This corrected data provided an estimate of the temperature at the crime scene before the corpse was found. From this information, you can determine the length of the time of the fly took to grow on the eggs to the development stage recovered from the body. The implementation, the implication, this is the best estimate of the post mortem interval that is available. Such estimation of the time since death are based on the speed of insect growth. Insects are the cold blooded, so their growth is influenced by temperature. Below a temperature threshold, development stops. Above a specific temperature threshold, the rate of the growth also slow down. Between these two points, However, the rate of growth of the juvenile insect is considered to have a linear relationship with temperature. The maximum temperature threshold for the different species of insect varies. Maximum temperature for the growth and developments for the California species larva was 39 degree centigrade, while for the Formia species it was only 45 degree centigrade. Upper threshold temperature 
are rarely experienced when investigating most crime scene. So, this factor is only frequently important although if the temperature do remain at or near the maximum for a long period of the time this will reflect the accuracy of the post mortem interval estimation as the growth of insect will be slower than expected equally a particularly low temperature development may not be possible at all. We call the temperature threshold below which the growth and developments will not take place the base temperature. This will vary from species to species and can vary with geographical location. Forensic significance of entomology. Forensic entomologists estimate the PMI by examine the insect population or or near the body or the corpse. Expert can also estimate how long the disease have been lying in a particular location by the soil and the insect beneath the disease. If there is a difference in the estimates and the analysis of the soil suggests a short post mortem interval while the analysis of body fauna suggests a longer post mortem interval. One can determine that the body has been moved. One can also estimate how long the body has been lying at a certain place by assessing the plants and the soil surrounding that very area of the body fund. Can insect mutually give us the previous information about a crime? The expert at the American Boards of Forensic Entomology says that we should be listening to the insect through the evidence they provide us. Can they tell us when and where somewhere was murder or even who did it? This information can we just have from an insect. Can they tell us what type of explosive material was used in a bombing? This study and the numerous green bottle blow fly may help us decide that we should be listening the information given by flies. Thank you.